As you can see here, I had the uh, side scope rail attached to the rifle with a C-clamp. I was using the C-clamp to hold it on as I checked the height of the top rail to the top of the scope mount with a depth micrometer. The top of the rifle is indicated by the red arrow, and the top of the rail indicated by the blue arrow. Get it within uh, one to three thousandths um, because the top or the sides of the scope rail are not necessarily parallel to one another. So you can see, just that's my measurement that I got on my depth micrometer right there. Uh, that's about it. Then I used two clamps to hold the scope mount on the rifle. I used a wiggler gauge to find the holes uh, to indicate them and drill them. I just used the, the mount itself as like a drill guide for drilling the three rivet holes into the side of the rifle. Uh, and you know, as I drilled the different holes, I, I'd take one clamp off and you know, use another clamp to hold it so it wouldn't lose its position. Um, as you can see, just some various drilling of the the stock adapter um, to fit an ace stock. See the finished rifle right there. It looks pretty good in my opinion. I uh, need to change the position of the second hole on the adapter to, so it fits uh, more flush with the receiver. I need to move it forward a little bit. Then you see just various accurate testing, accuracy testing with different types of ammo. It seemed that uh, Wolf Hollow Point was the most consistent. However, it seemed that the FMJ types of ammo uh, were fairly accurate as well. Then there's a lot of potential in this rifle. I need to get a scope and mount to see what kind of uh, of accuracy I can get. I'm also looking to switch the handguards out for a Canis Designs Magpul adapter. However, those are somewhat expensive, but given that they are, you know, a unique product, they they'd be worth it in my opinion.